Welcome back to Terminology Tuesday. Today we have purple coneflower, Echinacea purpurea, which is actually native to Florida, which many people might not realize. It only occurs in two counties though, in North Florida, and it's rare even in those counties. It's much more common further north. But this is a member of the Asteraceae family, also known as the sunflower family, or the composite family, or the aster family. And members of this family, which it's a huge family, uh, one of the largest families in the world, very diverse and so many species within it. But members of this family have what we call composite blooms. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. You can see the tiny little bees flying around on here. So members of the composite family, the Asteraceae family, are well known for being incredible pollinator attractors. And one of the reasons for that is because of their flower structure. So this is what we think of as a flower, but it's actually not a flower. We call it an inflorescence, which includes the stem and the top here, because it's more than one flower. It's multiple flowers in one. So the inflorescence includes a stalk and all of the flower structure at the top. So this specific individual has two types of flowers in its inflorescence. These long petals, what we think of as petals, are actually what we call ligules, and they're attached to an individual flower down at the base. Each one of these represents one flower, and that's called a ray floret or ray flower. The term floret just indicates a small flower. It, it just means you're referring to a small flower. So you can call this a ray flower or a ray floret. And here in the center, making up the cone in the cone flower, these are all individual flowers or florets, and they're called disc florets because they make up this large disc in the center. You can see up close, here are some examples of the disc florets separated from the actual inflorescence. And the reason why these, these types of plants with composite flowers are so attractive for pollinators is because they can land on one inflorescence um, flower and actually feed like, like they stopped at a buffet and just keep feeding af one flower after another. And so they're getting lots of nectar and lots of pollen from each individual flower. They can just keep feeding on them. So now you know what a composite bloom is. Thanks for joining me on this Terminology Tuesday and I'll see you guys again next week.